Hello everyone, back again with another video. Welcome back to round two of the USA Championships hosted by Zach21, Silverhammer, and Texas Pete. And for my second round, I'm facing against Winner, um, another 16-year-old that lives in the US, and he's consistently top 10 player ranked on Strategist and very formidable opponent. So I was pretty nervous for this match, but a bit about my setup before we get into it. Loose flag. Um, I usually go with loose flags, but usually over here or on the edges. So I tried something new with the middle. And w awkward spy position. I usually never have it on the flank as I'd like to be active with my spy. But if he could marshal or gen or marshal blitz on this side, I'm kind of ready for that. And maybe he's anticipating that I am active with my spy, so he won't move his marshal early in the game. And uh, scouts and sergeants. To start off with, maybe a little Sergeant Blitz here, and let's get into it. Turn that sound down there. Okay, so first I take with my Sergeant the Scout, and he anticipates the Sergeant as he has a Lieutenant Scout opening. What I usually like to start off with is finding information in the center to try and get my game going. So I'll bring a captain out, opposes lieutenant, try and trap it with my major maybe, but then I'll keep him at bay there so I kind of control the center until he pushes me. And then I'll have a similar opening on the sides with my sergeants, like I'll take that scout there. I know he likes to use scouts in the opening, so if I can drain those scouts and um, be able to reveal my major pieces later in the game without having them scouted, that'd be great for me. On the other hand, he opened up with the sergeant, so I lose the scout. Basically a trade there. Do a trade. Then I'll do the same thing on this side, take another scout, but then I'll meet a lieutenant. So basically the theme of this game so far is that my sergeant blitz has been met with his lieutenant and his sergeant, but it's good information to start off with for either of us, I guess. Um, I'm up two scouts, down two sergeants, but I also know two lieutenants. Just depends on your angle of the game. Okay, so this was probably an unneeded scout, as it's a tournament game pretty seriously, and I don't think he'd bring out a captain or major and risk it against this piece, which could be a uh, major on the side here since there is sergeant here. But, yeah. So I probably should have moved in there, which I will do now, and he guards it. So now we're thinking this is a colonel or a major, I would say. So I'll double attack his sergeant and keep it there for now. Actually, I'll take that. He'll take me with the major, but he won't believe this lieutenant here, and probably for the best for him, as it's not very believable bluff that I've put a colonel or general right beside his sergeant. So good take from him. I'm just transferring being down a uh, being down a sergeant or being yeah being down a sergeant to being down a lieutenant, and I also get major info. So I'll pressure his major with my captain here. Just looking to hold this side here. Now I've kind of controlled both sides because he can't really risk his major here and he can't move his lieutenant up or to the side. I think here I probably should have focused on shoring up the right side. But I'll bring my colonel out, try and get, get a lieutenant or major. And he's just letting me sit here. So that tells me that one of these two pieces are good. But since this one moved earlier on the game, I'm saying this could be the Marshal General because he just let me hit his Major when he moved up here and my Colonel could go to the right. Scouts that Major there, good scout from him. Um, a known Major in this position kind of gets rocky for me because I have no defense for it other than the Spy, which is not really a defense because he's not going to come with the Marshal there. So I kind of have to bluff my way out of this one. 
I'm going to try and pretend that this minor is good. Because obviously you wouldn't want, like, I could be thinking that one of these two are a major. And usually a player would just take this piece in front of the major. But if I could bluff this as like a colonel and general marshal, that's just like standing out there looking too obvious, but um, looking to capture a major or a colonel, um, I could hopefully draw a scout. And so that's exactly what I did. And then I moved the lieutenant back. So now I'm bluffing this as a marshal general type piece. So I'm controlled the middle right now. So a bit about winner. He likes to use closed flags, um, usually tripods, you know, here, here. Um, so I don't expect him to use a loose flag. And he's okay with showing his uh, big pieces, major pieces early, so that's why I'm expecting this could be a good piece and, you know, one of these third row type of thing. Um, other than that, he's a pretty versatile player. Sometimes he uses captains or lieutenants openings, others it's majors and colonels and sergeants and scouts. So can't really tell, that's why I went the conservative sergeant blitz opening instead of my usual major or captain blitz. But now that I find out this captain here, um, I want to take it for info since I already know that he's going to have a solid piece here defending his major. And so if I find the marshal or general on this side, that kind of allows me to push in the middle and just continue pressure on for him. And I also get a captain in the process. So I'll continue to pressure this. I don't think he'll call it the marshal or general there. So he'll move back, and I'll stay there, continuing pressure. And then he'll bring a piece. I'll continue my pressure in the middle. And I'll take the captain. And we'll find the marshal. So I probably could have been more patient here. I just left my colonel here until he bought up a piece and then took it, but it would have the same result. I would always going to be taking that marshal or that, that captain to find general or marshal because that piece would be so out of position and I would still be gaining a captain for that colonel. And I already have now the assumption that the general will be here or that's like could be the spy and this could be like the general type of thing. And so I would say that's a beneficial trade for me. The only bad thing about this game now is that I'm down a lieutenant, minor, and sergeant. But we have to take into account that he had his marshal right here, so flag could be looking one of these three spots. I don't know what this piece is, but I'll call it, because even if I lose the captain, I'm up one, and I'll get one of my minor pieces back, which is a minor. So now the rest of this game is all about using my information to continue to apply pressure until he makes a mistake, and once he makes a mistake, I can capitalize on that. So more about the tournament, um, this is, as I said, the USA Championships, uh, it's a six round tournament. Um, Zach21, also known as Manning2 Cruz, is playing fairway uh, this round, and the other two winners are Warlock and Dave, and they'll be playing this round, and then I'll be playing one of the two winners of those two matches that I said in the next round. And so Zach21, Manning2 Cruz won this competition last year. Um, winner actually finished second, so uh, obviously going to be a tough match here, but looks pretty positive so far.
So now I'm just trying to find a way, thinking of a way basically. I wouldn't call this shuffling because I don't really have known pieces, but I'm thinking, giving myself time to think of what can I do and how can I pressure him. And so I'll call that since I don't think he'll bring a colonel up this early in the game. And so I scout that lieutenant, obviously. Now, since I found a major on that side, the only thing that I think could take my captain on this side now would be a colonel. So that's why I'd be a bit more confident with my three captains on the side. Probably a setup flaw there, but they become more powerful on that side, if that makes sense, since I already know another major here, and his last player is probably in the middle. Before the game, he said um, that one of us would have to take a gamble to win this game, and so I was pretty scared of him just moving his marshal down, um, like calling the spy and, and doing that, so I was a bit wary of that. But here, um, a very unideal situation occurs where his captain takes my scout guarded by my captain. Um, I probably should have moved my major over. So I wouldn't move my gen up because even if I take this captain for a scout, I'm up two captains for a colonel, which is good. But I'm also down a lieutenant and sergeant, which is not good. And I would give him um, the winning chances there. So this is obviously really unfortunate because I'm kind of forced to trade captains or else he'll take my spy. Because he'll move in, and then I have to trade. Yep. Now, this could be a major because, as I said, it could be from the middle, and I already know three lieutenants. Or it could be another captain, I would say. Maybe a colonel, but I, I don't think so. So he here he's telling me that this could be a good piece. The colonel, as I said earlier, because his major can't be a, another one on this side. And so I have to be careful of this. I'm going to try and bluff my spy as a general, perhaps. But now I've learned from uh, a couple moves ago where his captain came, and I'll put my general there. So obviously I'm expecting major or captain here. If it's a colonel I can't take with my major or else I've lost the game. He's coming to defend with his marshal and here I made my spy a bit too obvious because I basically told him you can't go down. That was pretty uh, not smart of me there. And so that was a major. So then I'm assuming this could be a captain. Or maybe a sergeant or minor or whatever. Okay, lieutenant. So I know all of his lieutenants, all of his remaining lieutenants. This makes my minors and sergeants stronger. Unfortunately, I only have one sergeant left and three minors left. So not really much of a benefit. And my last lieutenant will probably die here, yes, to his colonel. So if we remember from earlier, he had his captain here his or that he was protecting with his marshal. And they had a colonel back row. So again, this is strengthening my argument that I had in my head that his flag is pretty near here since he's pretty stacked up. And remember when my captain was here about to pressure his two lieutenants, he was saying I couldn't go over because there's this piece. So I also still have in my mind that this piece, maybe now a major, or actually can't have a major left, but maybe now a captain looking to train or um, just a bluff there like a scout. Now I'm still making this spy pretty obvious here, but I'm going to start moving my marshal in the middle, looking to capitalize on something. But I won't take that. I think a critique of his that I can make right now is that he moved all of these pieces here, and I don't think there is a reason for that since he's kind of controlling the game with his marshal. And so this kind of gives me just more counterattack and more reason for me to bring my general while, while his marshal is preoccupied on this side.
But yeah, but I know these two lieutenants. Now I'm thinking this could be a colonel here, or this could be one of these two could be colonels. Because he doesn't have a major left. So I'm not really scared of anything here, except for the colonels, right? He had a colonel here. That's one major here. And then one of these two general or a spy, I would assume. So the only thing left that can beat my captain is his colonel. Unless his general is somehow here and it's not on this side. And so I know that this isn't a good piece. Here I actually misclicked, I meant to move my scout over one to twice. But I know that these aren't very good pieces, so they cannot take my captain. Now he does the right move knowing that this is not going to be a good piece. I don't think my captain's known here, but you still can do that because I wouldn't have a colonel just sitting here beside two known, uh, two unknown pieces. So he rightfully pressures the scout, brings this piece, which remember we thought this could be the spy or the general, and it's the general. So it was pretty fundamental setup by him. He had general here, spy or general here, major here, and lieutenant here. So now I'm going to try and pressure this general, see if he'll bite. He will not, and I don't really want to do anything about this major quite yet. So I'll still bluff this lieutenant as a colonel. So now I have all the information, but I'm down a colonel, a lieutenant, a sergeant, and a minor. I'm down four pieces here for general, marshal, colonel info. Make that four pieces to three pieces by taking a minor, since I know um, since I know he probably doesn't have another captain here, but that was a bit of a risk, of course. But I was bluffing this as my colonel earlier, so I don't think he'd bring a captain. So this, again, I think is a pretty rubbish piece. So during the game, um, here were a couple of thoughts of mine. So I knew these two lieutenants. And I knew, obviously, this third lieutenant. So that's all of the lieutenants. I knew one colonel, and obviously these two pieces. So the three pieces that I needed to find now um, were the colonel and two captains. Because, obviously, sergeants and minors, you can't really know until the end game. So I basically had all the info except for those three things. And, of course, most, most of these unknown pieces are probably going to be those colonel and two captains. So I know that this piece is either a colonel which is very unlikely because it's right here, so I can rule that out. Um, captain, which could be likely because, you know, it's near the general, or just a sergeant or minor. Same as this piece. But obviously not a colonel, could be a captain. So I'll continue to, uh, not really bluff this marshal, but maybe I could bluff it as a colonel or general, and this p this minor as well. So obviously I don't think this is very good, so I'll take it. Captain trade. So, as I said before, now all he has left is a captain and colonel that I don't know. Unfortunately, his lieutenant is going to come here, and a huge blunder I made was moving down here, and him being able now to discover one of these two pieces. So he's going to follow me up on that, and here's where I thought I lost the game, because now I have to reveal my general, and since I'm revealing my general, it also kind of makes this obvious that this is my spy. At least to me, I thought it made it obvious. And so once I get this lieutenant back, I'm still down a sergeant and a whole colonel. Just for marshal and colonel information now. So the lead is dwindling. My like, information advantage is dwindling a bit because of that general information that I gave up. But I'm still in this game. I know that this is a lieutenant. And I'm really hoping he comes to my unknown major here. That'll give me one piece up instead of zero pieces up. 
Okay, so this is kind of like the start of where I started to feel confident again that I could uh, win this game as he gives up his lieutenant. So now I'm up a piece instead of down two pieces. So in an end game potentially where I trade everything off, all he has is a colonel, all I have is a lieutenant. I know that that could be a draw because my he can't capture it. So it's a good start. Obviously I moved my colonel there because I know as general or marshal. And then here he shows his other known lieutenant to my major. So and that was great for me. Now I'm up two pieces to his one colonel. And if I can just get a sergeant back, I would call myself winning here because he does not know my marshal. So I don't think he should have given his way his lieutenants away, just like they're nothing. Now of these three pieces, I'm assuming one is the spy. One is the captain and one is the colonel, just because of here. Okay, so this could either be a colonel or a captain. Now, I know that this piece spawned from over this side. And it was near the general and major. And I don't think many players put a colonel next to a general and a major in a tournament game on the right side all clumped together like this. And I know as I've played him a lot, that he doesn't do that where he clumps a bunch of pieces together that are strong. So here I decide to take this piece. Remember, it could be a sergeant, minor, captain, or colonel. I was running... Um, at the odds, I was running through my reads and the odds. The odds obviously say I'm going to be 75% right at the time. Well, kind of, because there's obviously more like sergeants and minors. But, um, and my reads. So my read was that this was a sergeant trying to bluff me. And so I took it. And fortunately enough for me, it was a captain. And so maybe this is just a memory error from him. Maybe since I was like shuffling this martial major and scout around for two turns that he thought that this was my major or something like that. But now I'm up three pieces, two lieutenants and one captain for his colonel. And here I say I'm winning since he doesn't know my marshal. So obviously this piece can't be, in, uh, can't be the marshal of the general, so it's a pretty free hit for my colonel. And obviously I'm expecting another colonel because he knows his colonel, and yes, it's a colonel trade. So I'm going to move my spy towards the middle now. Of course, I know his last major, so my captains and lieutenants are invincible now. So now I have to move my major over. He can't be too risky with this major, since if he loses it to my marshal, I'm up four pieces to his one colonel, and then I would say it's a, almost a guaranteed win for me unless he... Lotto's my flag with his colonel. So now I'll move my marshal up. He's telling me here that this is his spy. If he takes this marshal, obviously I just described the situation um, that I'm up four pieces. If he doesn't and he retreats, I can move in. Chance that his general hits, very unlikely. Or the last chance that his major moves all the way here, bluffing or saying that this is the spy. So I'll continue to push, then he'll push me away, move down, this is obviously a sergeant or a minor. Now here's a very critical move that I did here, I, I said that this was a spy because he was starting his general and major, he made that pretty obvious that it was a spy, and I know that he likes to do corner bombs, so this is things about players' tendencies now, that I had to take into account while making this move. If this is a sergeant or minor, it's just a waste of a scout, right? But I'm banking on him usually doing corner bombs, that being the spy. It's a high risk, high reward type of play, or very low risk, high, uh, high reward type of play since it's only a scout. But that scout like spawned from here, so it could be my marshal. So you have to weigh those options, but I did that. Moved away my marshal from this sergeant or minor. Actually, I took that minor because I didn't want him to find out this bomb, and I knew it, it was a sergeant or minor. 
and then I scout this spy. So I'm in a great position now. All I need to do is trade majors and trade generals, and then I can just win out using my material, as my marshal is still unknown. So again, this can only be a sergeant or a minor. Or actually, it could be a scout, because he has one scout left. So I can't let my marshal be scouted here. So he'll actually do me a favor here, and I think this was one of his biggest blunders of the game, where he traded generals for me, even though I have the material advantage now. So I didn't really understand that, but that actually relieved a lot of tension for me. Because so, now I can attack with my marshal, attack with my major, without having to be wary of his general here. So still thinking this is a scout or a sergeant, probably a scout. There we go. So he scouts a minor, so it's basically nothing. But he knows these two pieces, I believe. So he'll capture one of them. This is a mistake of mine here, where I didn't have my marshal in the right position or my major in the right position to counteract this. Now he could also trap my captain by moving his colonel or marshal around, or actually marshal in. So this obviously sergeant or minor here. So I have to bring my lieutenant all the way across. This is very unfortunate since I was bluffing this as a marshal or a spy the whole time, and he'll be able to hit it with a minor or sergeant. Probably a sergeant, because he only has two minors. So yes, it's a sergeant he takes, I take. Now that kind of clears everything up for me, but I'm up a lieutenant, up a captain, down a colonel. Now my spy or my marshal has become pretty obvious, because he knows this minor, of course. And now, this is where, this is the biggest blunder of mine in the game, where I let him take my lieutenant here, my captain here, instead of having my major over here. So now I'm like, feeling a bit scared here. Um, I'm only up one lieutenant from colonel, so as I said, all those moves you go. Um, that's what I needed for a draw, basically, because I have a loose flank. And, but my marshal is still unknown. It's obviously becoming more and more obvious throughout the game. But that's still an advantage that I have that he does not have that. I could also be bluffing my spy there. So I know that this miner is done, so I know it in the tournament games, um, people expect you to be serious, obviously. So maybe a back row marshal bluffing as my, my miner here could work against this colonel. But if I if he does call this miner here, um, that would be very bad for me because then he'd be up two pieces versus my one. So I can't ex directly risk it against his colonel. So I'm going to try and capture my spy with his major here. So now I'm making my spy very obvious. And he takes my major with his marshal. And I found that a very questionable move at the time. Um, I was a bit confused because now he's given up control of the game. I have my marshal here trapping his colonel. His major's just here, but I have all the material advantage. I can move my minor up, look for a tripod here, and like win the game. So his only reasoning for doing this, I guess, would be having a chance at the flag. Because he knows that this piece is moved, and so he knows it's a loose flag. But his odds are not very good. He doesn't know any of these pieces. It's a 5, 6, 7, 8. 1 in 9 chance, 11.1% 11, chance of him getting the flag. So I don't think that was a great option for him, and I think that was his biggest mistake of the game. Because I think he could have had a draw if he left his marshal on the board. But he wanted the win. So now I think that, obviously, I know that this is a minor sergeant. Um, looks like he's about to guess for the flag. And he does. So I know in his videos, um, he said when he's played me that this is a common flag position for me. So that's exactly why I put a bomb there. I remember um, that originally before this game, um, I had my setup and it was my flag was here with all the bombs straight across. But I've never really done this where the flag is like kind of in the middle of all the bombs instead of at the edge of each. Like I've had my flag here sometimes or here. 
and so I decided to change it up, and it was for the better. So now he's given up complete control of this game. My marshal is against his colonel here. Um, I'm up a lieutenant, and everything else is equal, except for I also have a scout and spy. Now in this position, scouts and spies are very crucial, because he could be bluffing his miners as sergeants, or sergeants as miners, so if I could just waste those pieces, find out what they are, trap them, get the tripod, game over. But it's basically lost room here. And so I'll just do a shuffling around thing here. I'll try and bring my sergeant into the game. Put my lieutenant on this side. Just protecting my flag here. Obviously I can't move up on this or I'll give him a chance for his colonel to lot on my flag. So I'll bring my sergeant into the game. Hit this. Minor. Best case scenario for me. He'll move that up. Now he's trapped his colonel. And he'll surrender. Game over. So I won this game. Um, very close game until obviously the end where he sacked his marshal for my major. Then he used his major to hit um, a bomb, which he only had 11% chance of getting my flag. So I didn't understand that at all. I understand if I if he had like a 75% chance sacking the marshal there. But when he has a close to 10% chance, um, kind of an odd questionable decision there. But that's it for the second round of the USA Championships. I look forward to the third round, and that would be taking place um, next week. And I'd be playing Fairway or Zach or Warlock or Dave next round. And see you guys in the next video. Thank you.